Okay, so the last songwriting challenge was writing a song using the whole step scale. That was a very limited scale, but as we saw, it was perfectly possible to write a decent song using it. It just wasn't very, um, flexible. This time we're kinda gonna stick with the whole step scale, but we're gonna do it a little bit different. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the whole step scale, and on every step we're going to put a minor chord. That means that every time we switch a root note, we get a new minor chord. That gives us six minor chords evenly spaced out. Now, this also has a lot of limitations. In regular minor, you have three minor chords, three major chords, one diminished one, and loads of different spicy notes to flesh out each chord. But here, the minor, or Aeolian, is going to cling to us like a determined tick. And technically, you can choose this by using, say, an A minor 7 slash C as a C6 chord, and I guess I don't want to make it a rule that all the chords have to be in first position, because there are already a lot of limitations at play here. But I will say that trying to get around the minor parts of this minor chord challenge is maybe not quite in the spirit of the thing. But hey, even an A minor 7 slash C can't change the fact that everything moves by whole steps, so go nuts! Now, as opposed to the whole step scale, this one is a little bit harder to keep track of, since the scale changes constantly. But if you keep in mind the whole step scale you're using as a baseline, then it shouldn't be too much of a problem, since everything is minor chords. But I would recommend checking the song a couple of times after you're done to weed out mistakes, like I always have to do when I make theory-specific songs like this. Now, interestingly, this sounds less minor than regular minor does. I was expecting this to sound, you know, gloomier than normal symphonic metal, which is virtually always written in minor scale. But while the song I wrote sounds pretty dramatic at times, it turns out that switching everything out of the minor chord does less for the minor feel than I'd have thought. And the explanation for that is actually pretty simple. See, using the same chord type everywhere removes a lot of the tension you normally have access to, and resolving a major chord into a minor chord is a very powerful move. But you can't do that here. Instead, what you can do is rely on the space between the chords. Each chord will be a whole step away from another, or a major third, or a tritone, or a low sixth, or a low seventh. Quite simply, the tonal picture in this challenge can't get all that complex. You can use chord progressions that create different kinds of tension or allow for nice chromatic movement. In fact, you're gonna have to rely on it. I mean, that's all you can do when everything is the same distance apart and has the same tonal qualities. My trick here was to create a bunch of little chord progressions and then see what kind of melodies they allow for, try out some different stuff and then decide where in the song each part would go. I mean, I may be a theory nerd, but I still like songs with uh, verses and choruses and bridges and stuff. And don't be afraid to scrap ideas that don't work, it's probably going to happen. Oh, and of course, just like the whole step scale, the stuff you can make in this challenge doesn't have a tonal center. So using different keys or chords as sort of a false tonic can help the parts be a bit more different. Make, makes it sound less samey. Now, as I said, you're gonna rely entirely on the distance between the chords, and there's actually a lot of variation we can use here. Moving up or down one step will sound pretty smooth. Moving down a major third won't sound too dramatic, while moving up a major third or a tritone in any direction will be a pretty audible choice. None of these jumps will sound completely normal, as they're not there in a normal septatonic or seven-note scale, but not all of them will sound as aggressive. Some of them can even be pretty subtle. This is one of the best ways to differentiate between a verse and a chorus, in my opinion, as you'd normally want the chorus to be the most outspoken part, but that depends on what you want to do with the song. The rules here are pretty rigid, and there's a lot they don't allow for, but you still have a lot of control and agency. My song got pretty dramatic, but I don't think that's necessarily the case for every song you can make using the rules of this challenge. Maybe I just get stuck easily on my first impressions and kinda just uncritically roll with it, who knows? Either way, I'm pretty happy with the song I wrote. It's gonna come out next Thursday, and I'm gonna make sure that video and this one link to each other. And if you make a song based on this challenge, then let me know, I really wanna hear it. And of course, let me know if there's something I got wrong, it could happen. So. Thank you so much for watching this video, stay musical, stay nerdy, and stay tuned for more musical nerdiness, and I'll see you all later. Bye bye.